Driving at Home with Avor's housing economist, Claire Losey. Welcome to this week's Driving at Home with Dr. Claire Losey. I'm Danielle Hammett, filling in for Emily Shinevere this week. All right, let's get right to it. We've had some great and less great news about America's economy in the last couple of weeks, and we're going to go ahead and get the less great news out of the way. Last week, Fitch Ratings downgraded the U.S.'s credit rating. Dr. Losey, what does this mean for housing? Great question. And so first, just to paint the broader context so we're all on the same page, when Fitch downgraded the U.S. debt from AAA to AA+, it was partially in response to how the federal government really handled the debt crisis back in May of this year. And there's a similar move that was initiated by one of the other three credit rating agencies, S&P, in 2011. And listeners may also remember that we had a debt ceiling standoff that year as well. And so essentially, Fitch Ratings is alarmed about the country's deteriorating finances and is exhibiting their doubts about the government's ability to really tackle the rising debt burden because of the political animosity that we see throughout our government. So essentially, and broadly speaking, we know that credit ratings are a measure of how safe it is to invest in a debt that is issued by a country or a company. So it's a measure of credit worthiness, right? It's very similar to the credit score that's used by potential home buyers, right, on their mortgage application, or a credit score that's used by a household to incur debt, like on credit cards. So overall, this is not great news for the economy, and it has really hit the stock market over the past week. There is a sharp decline in the S&P 500 and the 10-year Treasury yield, which is a proxy for the mortgage rate, rose above 4%. So overall, the biggest effect on housing is just going to be through the 10-year Treasury yield, which again, indirectly affects mortgage rates. But overall, while we anticipate that mortgage rates will increase in the near term, they should de-escalate over the coming months as inflation continues to decelerate. Got it. And the Fed might agree with you, um, even though they did uh, do a small uptick last week or the week before last. One good thing that did come out in the news a couple of weeks ago, if you missed it during the day of our Central Texas Housing Summit, but the Fed is no longer saying that a recession is in our future. Dr. Losey, what's your take on that? I think broadly speaking, the odds of us seeing a recession, even a mild recession, are declining with each passing month just given that it appears that the labor market really is cooling off. And if folks remember, the labor market was really kind of the factor in this whole fight against inflation that was proving particularly sticky for the Federal Reserve. And so the fact that the labor market is starting to cool is definitely a good sign. And then, of course, consumer balance sheets remain still relatively robust, just given strong fiscal stimulus in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. So overall, households seem fairly well positioned. Financial markets are still performing fairly well. So the likelihood of us experiencing a soft landing in which we don't see those massive layoffs, right, that are typical of um, the recession as we generally think of it, the odds of us seeing that soft landing are definitely increasing with each passing month. That's very good news. You mentioned the labor market and and jobs. Let's dig into that a little bit more. What are you seeing right now in the Central Texas job market? Sure. And so just to back up a little bit and talk about jobs on a national level. So last week we had the most recent batch of jobs data come out. And we saw that employers added about 180,000 jobs in July, which is a lower count than was expected. And it's also a lower count than we've seen over the past couple of years. 
So overall indication that the nation's labor market is sort of starting to gradually cool off and it plays into the notion that we were just talking about a minute ago that the Fed can actually achieve the soft landing of decelerating inflation without those without that massive unemployment. And then with respect to the unemployment rate in July, it declined from 3.6% to 3.5%, which is really a historically low level. So overall, the labor market is still well positioned and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing right now, which is just decelerating a little bit. Meanwhile, in the Austin labor market, what we've seen is still relatively strong jobs growth on a month-over-month basis, about 4.4% in June. Our numbers lag the nation a little bit. We don't yet have July numbers, but talking about June, month-over-month jobs growth is about 4.4%. The unemployment rate was about 3.5%. So we're performing quite well and um, certainly above our pre-pandemic average with respect to both the unemployment rate and our employment growth rate. Good to know. Good to know. We'll look forward to those July numbers. Closing it out, what's happening in the Central Texas housing market this week? So we saw somewhat of a decline on the residential sales side, which broadly speaking is to be anticipated just with higher mortgage rates. So Mortgage rates reached about 6.9% last week. For July, the monthly average was about 6.8%, whereas in June it was 6.7%, and in May, 6.4%, i.e. mortgage rates have gradually ticked up over the summer, which has posed somewhat of a decline on the residential sales side. So closed sales were essentially flat, but Active listings declined about 8%. So overall, we've seen a little bit of retraction on the residential sales side. However, we've seen a commensurate rise in activity on the residential leasing front, which is what we would anticipate, right? We've talked before about how a home for rent is the most comparable alternative to purchasing a home. So those potential buyers who can't necessarily enter the market right now because mortgage rates are posing too much of a drag on their finances are choosing to rent a home instead. So we saw that closed leases ticked up 36% this week. And meanwhile, new leases were up about 27%. So overall, just much more movement on the leasing front over the past couple of weeks, again, as mortgage rates have ticked higher. Got it. And that makes me think, guys, if you haven't had a chance to either listen to Claire's Buy Versus Rent Index presentation from our Central Texas Housing Summit a couple of weeks ago in July, or um, or downloading the report itself, uh, you can get both of those things, both the recording of the summit and downloading Dr. Losey's report at abor.com. So definitely check that out. It's got some great stat. Um, we also have a downloadable that you can brand and share with your brokerage information to share with your clients on what that decision to lease versus buy the long-term wealth impact of that. It's some really great stats. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. But that's it for this week. Thank you guys for tuning in to this week's Driving at Home. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Take care.